In JavaScript, we have the global scope. And what do we mean by the global scope? Well, for example, we have the window object. Now, the window object is a scope. You know that objects have scope. And the window object is the highest level object. And this object and all of its memory pointers, so all of these symbols that are directly attached to the window object are globally available, meaning they're globally scoped, or they can be accessed anywhere in the script. For example, I can access engine because engine, this variable, is being created on the global scope. It's the same as me going to the console and typing in, for example, engine equals. And that will create a memory pointer on the window object. And it will be globally available. It will be available to this scope and it will also be available to this scope as well. And that is only for symbol names that are directly attached to the window object. That is a globally accessible object called engine. And now what we can do is we can run this. We have the run expression. And again, I'm just creating a variable and we're also creating an embedded subroutine called add and then we're invoking it. And then what we're doing is we're saying console.log and then we say engine. Now, what we have with JavaScript is something called inferred globals. In other words, if I infer something to you, it means that I can suggest something. For example, I can deduce or conclude something from evidence, reasoning, rather than get this from an explicit statement. Now, you know, in JavaScript, we write statements. So we're kind of working on a conclusion. We're trying to conclude something. So what JavaScript is trying to do, this JIT compiler, is it's trying to deduce or conclude where this memory pointer is. And what it does is it starts to go up the scopes if it cannot find it. So it tries to look inside of this scope for the memory pointer engine. If it doesn't find it, it goes to the next scope. It won't find it. We've only created a variable called A and that's it. So it won't find it in this scope either. So it will go all the way up to the window scope and it will find it there. So I can pull out a globally accessible variable or constant or subroutine that's attached to the window object. And so what it will do is it will keep going up and it will find it here. Let's go ahead and hit refresh. And then I want to say run expression, which will then also pop on the stack the add subroutine. And then we console.log. And then we are simply trying to find the memory pointer engine. And it went all the way up to the global scope. So it inferred that we just wanted to go up to the global scope. So if it can't find it in its current scope, it's automatically inferring, suggesting that we want to keep going up the scopes until we find it. So what happens when, for example, I say console.log A again, the same type of thing happens. It's still inferred global, which means we keep going up until we reach the global scope if we cannot find the symbol. But in this case, we can. So what it does is it says, right, we need to log out the A symbol. It's not in this scope, R. But there is a symbol called A in this scope, which is equal to 10, and it returns the value 10. So it stops there on that scope. Now, what happens, for example, when I um, to create a variable called engine and I'll set it to string engine. And then what I want to do is log out engine. Let's go ahead and save this now and hit refresh. What do you expect to happen? Well, I say run expression and it says string engine. And you'll notice that with our variable, it said, right, let's try and find that symbol name in this scope. Ah, we found it in this scope called engine and it stopped there and it printed that out to the console. It didn't need to go anywhere up the chain. It was directly defined in that scope. But you'll notice that this globally available engine object is still perfectly fine. It's still here. We didn't change the global variable called engine. You can think of it like this. If we had a look at the window object, we created the engine property and that is in fact 
an object that we created. And then I created the run expression callable object. So I've just fashioned it as an object here. And then we have a is 10, because don't forget we created a variable inside of our run expression subroutine. And then also we had the add subroutine and in there I created the engine property. So that is in fact not going to affect this property. Each one of these braces has its own scope. So we don't have naming collisions. So that's also something that is very, very good. But this also means you have to be very careful as well when you've got inferred globals. Because what you have now is if I say, right, okay, engine, that's fine. That could log that out to the console, for example. But what happens when I use the equals operator? Now you have to be very, very careful. I'm gonna say new string. Let's go ahead and save this and hit refresh. And then we're going to execute the run expression subroutine. Now we're not logging anything out to the console for now, but now when I take a look at engine on the global scope, it says new string. And what it did was it looked at the memory pointer. It looked for it in this scope, said nope. Looked for it in this scope, said nope and then it went out to the window object and it did find it. But it did the assignment operator as well and it assigned that string and replaced the object that was residing within it. This is why you have to be very, very careful. If you wanted to do that, change a global constant or variable, then that's perfectly fine or even a subroutine, a global subroutine, doesn't matter. It's just a symbol name. However, if you need to create something within the scope, you need to say var or use the constant keyword because that then means this is explicitly creating this symbol in this scope and none other. If you just type in the symbol name without the declaration of the variable or the declaration of the constant prior, then you will have an inferred global. And in fact, let's just say this. Let's just say uh, test. So now I'm gonna go to test equals new string. Let's go ahead and save this now and hit refresh. Now what you have is an inferred global. So I'm gonna run, I'm gonna say run expression. It didn't error. You may be going, what? How come it didn't error? Well, we have the assignment operator here, don't forget. Now what you have is an inferred global where it looks for test in this scope, then it looks for it in this scope, doesn't find it, then it goes to the window object, but it didn't find it there either. But because we're using the assignment operator and we're assigning the new string, guess what's happening? Let's take a look. You go to window, you go to the window object, and then you type in test, and lo and behold, it's actually created that memory pointer test on the window object. It created a global variable. That is what's called clobbering the global scope. Imagine if I had five or six different variables, two or three. What you're doing is you're clobbering, you're unnecessarily creating a larger window object and it's gonna make it harder for the browser to really search through. Now don't get me wrong, the browser is extremely quick and JavaScript is very fast at finding stuff in, stored in memory pointers. However, what I would like to illustrate to you is we've just clobbered the global scope. We've unnecessarily created the test test two and the test three symbols on the window object. We've done that unnecessarily. And that's very, very bad. You can have all sorts of naming collisions. You can start overwriting data where it shouldn't. So be very, very careful. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. And obviously if you just tried to point to the data, so let's save it now, refresh the browser. So now the window object doesn't contain test at all. So let's try and point to this. Let's hit refresh and then let's go ahead and run the expression. You're going to get an error that says, sorry, I cannot find test. So the reason why I error this time is because we're just pointing. We're trying to find something in memory. And basically you've got the librarian that comes back and says, sorry, I can't find this symbol. However, if you use the assignment operator, you are now going to create a global symbol on the window object and assign whatever value 
is to the right of it. So that is what is called inferred globals. You have the global scope and you also have callable objects scopes as well.